This video contains content sponsored by John Wilson Blades and MK Blades. Opinions discussed in this video do not reflect the views of John Wilson or MK. <laughs> Hello and welcome to This and That. I'm Dave Lee, and I'm thrilled to welcome back to the show all the way from Germany, Jonathan Beyer. Welcome back to The Skating Lesson. Hello. Say so a special hello to Mary Lou Reef. You know that you are, she is your biggest fan. Yes. I love it. We're Facebook friends. Yes. And yeah. Quanet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, you know what is so funny is that this week, Phil Hirsch has come back to skating and social media in a big way. And he was saying that he does not respond mm -hmm. to anyone who doesn't have their full name on Twitter, except for Quanet because he's met her and she will find him in a dark okay, alley got it. if she yeah. needs to. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that they don't have a healthy Twitter relationship. <laughs> <laughs> I know that Joe Inman better never get on Twitter. but <laughs> And you should never talk about gingers on Twitter, Jonathan Byer. Starting all sorts of trouble because you thought... Who that knew? <laughs> I... <laughs> Apparently it's racist. It's racist to I ask did. about the origins of a redheaded individual in Russia. Yes, well... Little did I know. You didn't listen. There it is. I think you need a... Your, your publicist could issue a statement, something like that. But let's get into... I was Grand genuinely curious. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but let's get into the Grand Prix Final, because this was um, a barn burner, a game changer. Little Nathan Chen from the United States of America. We've watched him since he was Peter and the Wolf, and I think he was all of the instruments and all of the different parts. He right. landed all That's of the right. quads and landed a silver medal here. Big surprise. Do you think, is this kind of out with the old and in with the new in, in men's skating? Was this kind of a changing of the guard a bit? Um... Yes, I think so. Now, originally in my fantasy, I almost had the short program results as the final results. I That's was sort doing of very how I well after the gonna... short program. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And then the long program happened, and I was like, ah! um, I was thrilled. I like Nathan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so let's have the conversation. Okay. In the United States, we vilify the athlete and we glorify the artist. Yes. Right? It's true. But maybe maybe we don't have to do that. <laughs> maybe yeah. we can get behind Nathan instead of be afraid of him. Does yeah. that make sense? Like I yeah. I I'm gonna put it up. I like Nathan. Mm -hmm. Um as you know, Tarasa called him very musical mm -hmm. in her commentary. <laughs> and I think he is musical. Like, every, it's not like when everyone's like, oh, Max is an athlete, not an artist. Mm -hmm. mm, that's a little different scale than saying Nathan isn't an artist, right? Mm -hmm. And already, like, at NHK, between his short program and long program, his skating skills are doing that thing where they magically start to get better, even yes. though he's not changed his skating. Yes. A la Dennis said at that World Championships when Frank was like, Suddenly he learned edges or something in one day because all the scores got higher. It's the same thing, right? Yes. I think I think it's good. I think it's I think his costumes are better. And I think Marina is good at helping him come up with the best strategy to look more artistic. Yeah, and you have to think that training right? along the ice dancers and Patrick Chan kind of influence used to say, maybe I should look up and present more in the middle of all of these quads. I also think Perhaps. he was yeah. maybe getting the stamina and the confidence to do all of those quads to where it wasn't the focus before. So I at least noticed right. in the free skate that when he didn't have to change up the program because he wasn't adding in quads, that he seemed to pay more attention to some of the details. Right. And I think throughout the season it's getting better. It has ways to go, but I don't think it's a... Max Aaron situation where there is a disconnect between the performance and the music. And he was someone who Sports performed stuff, yeah. as a kid when he was very confident in his technical ability. And I think that that and really did. Yeah. Yeah. The funny thing you mentioned to Rossova, when he, when he landed the quad Lutz triple toe at one of his Grand Prix events, Tarasova's comment was goodbye, everybody. <laughs> like, <laughs> bye. <laughs> because also there's a difference in the way he does it. Mm. When he does it, it looks right. Like sometimes when Boy and Jim would do it, you were still kind of like, Ugh. you know, it still looked scary or something like that. And there's, 
something to this body type, mm -hmm. right? Nathan Chen, Boyan Jin, Han Yu, they all kind of have this same kind of frame that what seems are they to not lend eating, itself. And what are they going to look like at 30? That's what I... And literally, but I mean, you look at somebody like Adam, Adam has to be like in the most incredible shape ever, but his body just looks different. Yes. He has hips and stuff. You know what I mean? It's just, I, I wonder if it's like this kind of very lilt, narrow hipped body seems to be like an unfair advantage. Well, that was why Frank Carroll was excited to get Michelle Kwan at the beginning. If you read Christine Brennan's first book, <laughs> because he was like, oh, she'll have a Christy Yamaguchi body. This will be wonderful. You know? Yeah, <laughs> it's more than aesthetic. There's real science behind yes. it. Yeah, yeah. So yes, those those narrow hips, they spin easier in the air. I mean, <laughs> we're gonna get in so much trouble, but yes, it yeah, is. Um, know, if you've know. seen Bo Yang Jin or Han Yu or Nathan Chump, there is... Uh, there is something to that. Yeah, yeah. They all have a very good strength to weight ratio. Yeah. I mean, I imagine Nathan doesn't look very strong, but I imagine he is. You've got to be yeah. if you can do that. Yeah, exactly. I and his know, spins are okay. Yeah. His spins are okay. His edges are okay. They'll get better, right? Yeah. But I think it's there. I think like, the biggest I think thing he's... is he was kind of looking down before, and now he's yeah. looking more up. And yes. Right. I mean, there have been... I noticed in the program, it looked like there was actually Marina maybe forced him to pay attention to some of these details within. But she still doesn't sit in the kiss and cry and stuff. I'm so, so intrigued by what is the dynamic the is. big... Yeah. One reporter messaged me the other day and said, so is Nathan uh, officially with Marina in Detroit? And that is the, the big question on what the okay. status is because there was never an official press release that Nathan changed coaches, but he right. has not really been primarily in California. But if you read that ice network article, it was worded so carefully that right. Marina was training him, but it didn't say that she was his coach. And I think they still want Raphael on the picture if they right. need him for jump help. And Raphael helped him at the it's last working. two events yeah. and it seemed to help. Yeah. So I really picture Marina Zueva at this point moving into more of a kind of Marta Caroli type role that they kind of maybe wanted Frank Carroll to be in as a as a jump right. expert. But I think Marina could be more of a coordinator where she works on the programs and sends someone for jump help to Raphael, who right. at yeah. this point, Nathan has most of his technique. I mean, his triple axle needs to be adjusted and the quads need to be fixed, but she can focus on one thing and she seems to be a good organizer and preparer Big of students. Kind of yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that that, look, if she can get Patrick to start landing jumps, we will be like miracle worker. Yeah. So well, she hasn't yet. <laughs> well, that was the big thing for me here is that Patrick Chan looked so strong in, in the short program and his falls in the free skate were like, I felt that Patrick could do all of those jumps. And well, that, that's the thing. It's like the difference between the triple axel, mm -hmm. between the short program, which was, was exquisite, mm -hmm. and then to the long program, I was like, how is it that different? Yeah. It's not like you kind of made it in the short and then you didn't in the long. It's like there are two totally different people jumping that jump. And the I mistakes don't... were at the beginning of the program. So it wasn't like you could say he was untrained or tired. And the thing is, is that he actually had a costume. It looked like he was fully invested in the event. And now that we he's... We think the most legit. Yeah. Now that he looks the most legit, he makes these mistakes. I thought it was encouraging that he landed the quad sow cow, but... The best, the best thing he did. Yeah. yeah. I was like, were you too focused on that? And you finally did that, but you can't do anything else? I don't know. It's so confusing to me how you can do one thing that's so amazing and then something else that's... Seems like a loss of focus or something. I don't so, know. So with some of our skaters that require candles, the one well, let's thing smell, I'm let's smell it. <laughs> the one thing I'm going to say is that for the ones that have all the ability and none of the consistency that we would like, as you get older, it seems like you get fewer of those times when everything comes together. So I think that Patrick has another championship in him. I just don't know at what moment it is going to be, and I would never count right. on it. Uh, it's right. happening just because it, the stars don't seem to align as often as you get older. For well, like, let's hope it's not at, like, a four continents or something. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> That'd be a waste. Yeah, okay. But you kind of know it's going to come together for Patrick at some point. It does not look yeah. like he is 
It does what? get closer and closer each time. The program is nice. Like that. Oh my god! For... Especially the shorts. Yes. I really like the short, but it does bother me. It's so annoying on YouTube, like which programs and which competitions they choose to have a copyright problem yes. with. Sometimes they have a problem with shorts. Sometimes they don't. There were some problems with like hobbies long. Even I was like Elvis. It's not. Yeah. You had to watch it. On, if you ever have a problem on YouTube, go to Daily Motion because apparently they are nicer over there. And that okay. is where you can watch Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer and Patrick Chan and all okay. of the songs you want to hear. That yeah, YouTube it seems I'm like, who is policing that? Because certain networks so seem to. So I don't. It's weird. like when you post something, there's like a YouTube something embedded in the program that you find out pretty quickly. So that's, okay. if you have anything, okay. something could play in the background and, and you'll hear it. And usually it'll pick okay. it up. Sometimes they pick it up later, but yeah. Okay. Interesting. Well, because one, one of the Patrick ones I found, they would turn up the volume just in time for the commentary and then turn back down the music. <laughs> so it's like, the fans no. are on top of it. Like they really yeah. are. You'll see a lot well, there's of- a, There's a way. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But I love his short program. So I've actually seen a video of Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer where the music is being played backwards or something. It's very strange. <laughs> did it you was... hear something? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, what did you make of Hanyu's performance? Speaking of Hanyu and the, and the free skate, we've seen the Prince program a couple of times. We've seen the quad loop. He's landing it. It's fighting it. Does he keep it it's in cool to going see. forward? It's cool to see. Yeah, yeah you have to now. And I would imagine, because remember, the sow cow used to be so scary. Yes. Like, even in that Olympic season, we're like, should you even be trying this? But it just took some time. I, but the loop looks pretty good overall. Um, I'm not a fan of the Prince program. <laughs> Are you a fan of either one of his programs this year? I'm a fan of him. Me too. Yeah, I'm a fan of him. That's not the question. I certainly like the long better than the short. But I think that there's a better long for him, too. Yeah. So maybe and they certainly a better costume for him. Year. Yeah, I've never understood. The short one, the color purple, I know that there's a purple connection. Yes. But that particular shade of I purple? I would go type? deeper purple on him and maybe not a vest. Uh, yeah, it's a bit pastel. And it, it seems to fight who he is instead of compliment it. Like, I felt like he was doing, like, skating with the stars. And his assignment was Prince. Or, you know what I mean? Yes. Instead of, like, he chose to do it. And the same thing, he does these, like, Johnny weir kind of, like, drapey. <laughs> to me, this was, like, Johnny Weir, the sea urchin Johnny Weir. Like, if Johnny right. were oh, my, to... If Johnny, Johnny were Weir's to... costume was with <laughs> Anna Pogalaya's, um Pirates of the Caribbean seashells. <laughs> yes. And then it gave birth to this. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of pictured if, if we froze the tank at SeaWorld, Johnny would look wonderful opening the... <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. But as far we don't as... go to SeaWorld. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> <laughs> um, as far as the, the program goes, I just think that last year's was better. But I was wondering, does he have the energy to do that footwork sequence at the end like he did last year? I mean, this program that he's doing to add the quad loop in... He fights for that jump all the way. You can tell it must take a tremendous yeah. amount of energy then to do the rest of the program. I think yeah. eventually we are going to see him land that fourth quad, but it seems to be that he is right on the edge of his technical ability in terms of what he could do in terms of stamina. So, I'm And he's not afraid of, like, trying. No. You know what I mean? He's like, oh, I'm just going to use this Grand Prix and try to figure this out. And, yeah. I mean, mind you, he still wins, but it's like you know he's experimenting and trying stuff. And it's different because he does always seem to peak at the Grand Prix final, eh? Not this year. So uh, well, well, we don't know yet, really. Yeah. Well, if it gets worse at Worlds, I if don't you're know. watching Yuri on Ice, it is the most important <laughs> event on the year because TV Asahi is the sponsor of the Grand Prix, and I believe one of the other networks, maybe NHK, has the world. Someone will correct us on this, but okay. I believe that that is why Yuri on Ice emphasizes the Grand Prix final as opposed to... They do. To they make it sound like it's the Olympics and the worlds are an afterthought. And I don't know if it's big because it's coming right off the heels of all the other Grand Prix events and then goes right into Japanese nationals, so maybe it's just a hotter time over there. Do you think he needs Victor to come and train him? Oh my gosh, you need a whole show just dedicated to Yuri. It's like your book club, but it's like an anime club. <laughs> um, <laughs> just saying, just saying. Did okay. you see any resemblances to Hanyu and Yuri together, Hanyu? Um, Yes, 
Including in that cute little moment he and Shoma Uno had on the podium. <laughs> yes. When they were like arm in arm, I was like, that's right out of Yuri on Ice. So when you is. said podium, I thought you were going to say something else. If you saw the end of episode 10, I thought you said po, and I was like, whoa, okay. No, 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 no. So anyway. Yes. Um... <laughs> Go catch up on Yuri on Ice on YouTube, and you'll yes. get all the jokes, I promise. You so... won't get it. Okay? <laughs> and just stay away from those poor cutlet bowls until the end of this Olympic season, okay? That... <laughs> Unless you win, then you're allowed to have one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, did you see on Thanksgiving, I posted that thing about the poor cutlet bowl, and someone was very upset. It didn't upset. go over great. It didn't go over great. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. But meanwhile, mm -hmm. every skater has, like, Snapchat at that moment. And yes. Right. They all get it. They all get it. Except yeah. for the fans. It's great. That's right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but as we go to, I guess, Hani moving forward, do you still consider him to be the ultimate skater in the world. Is he the best in your mind? Well, here's the interesting thing. I'm going to refer to my notes. Yes. Um, <clears throat> on components. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's talk components. Let's talk. Chan beat Hanyu on skating skills and transitions. Agree. 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 Disagree. Agree. Agree, agree. right? Agree. Hanyu won on performance, composition, and interpretation. Agree. Disagree. So they both have muzak -y kind of free skates? Correct. Correct. How do you interpret... So interpretation of less complicated music. Mm -hmm. Is that strong interpretation? Because I don't always get that Hanyu is selling his program. And even when Patrick Chan is not really on his A game, I noticed that he still is selling the choreographic sections. You know, he has those new parts. I would give Patrick interpretation, actually. I would, I really Hanyu. would too. Yeah. I would, I really Choreography, would. I think my personal preference is Patrick's, but I think that Hanyu has a fine program and then. I, yeah, I don't think Hanyu should have had like low scores. No. I just, to me, I would have Chan by a little bit, by at least 0.25, yeah. if not 0.5 on some of these. Yeah. yeah, I thought like kind of the point of PCS was kind of to reward it, even if the jumps went awry yeah. also, yeah. but is to appreciate something that's been created. Yeah. And we'll talk about that in the ladies. <laughs> yes. um, but that's, I was sort of surprised by, because I thought Chan's programs overall have a little classier quality to them. I it's can not that I don't understand the performance execution with the number of mistakes that Patrick made. Yeah. Han, you made mistakes too, but they weren't as glaring Disrupt. as falls. Yeah. Disruptive, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. But yeah, I was thinking, you know, Adam, I was thinking about this with Adam Rapon about how he would be judged because I think if you look at Adam's choreography, performance execution, and interpretation, he could be up there. But they did not let him. But the skating skills is the anchor mark and that yeah. is where adam really struggles and you can really tell that in with the other men just watching adam do his crossovers you know forwards or backwards across the rink you're like well that you know all yeah, the points just in that general you, yeah just all the jeremy just, abbott points that you want to give to adam you kind of have to shave off on the first two because the transitions right. are often affected <laughs> by the skating as right. well what do you think well, about I'm, adam here would you still okay if you're the, on the selection committee because I look, I look at this as that we have two spots in the men and three spots in the ladies to send to the world championships. Obviously, the aim is to get as many spots for the Olympics as possible. Right. Now that we have opened up Pandora's box in terms of selection committee, I would not go just by nationals results for such an important world championships. Especially, right. It may end up going that way. But yes. Yeah. Uh, look, I'm voting all the way. I'm sorry, we yeah. opened Pandora's box. I'm looking at the whole season. This performance here, does it hurt Adam's chances? Does it help him that he made the final? Does it hurt him that he didn't perform I, as well? What would you, how would you compare him to someone well, right like Jason now, Brown? Well, right now, I think Max is a non-talking point. Yes. Right? So I think it, and Nathan is obviously, we Going. have to have. Yeah. So then it's between Jason and Adam. Adam. So I'm sure we'll see. There's a lot of time between the last time Jason competed and Nationals. Yes. Is the quad a little more solid by then? Depends, yeah. And is Adam's yeah, quad the consistent? Yeah, is higher for Jason. So I think they're at about an even playing field going into Nationals, where I see kind of Nationals as... 
like a skate off for them, you know, that's, or maybe four continents, you know, but that's what I kind of look at that, whether they determine, yeah. I think Adam could have made more of a strong point for himself here had he at least skated. It was, he was always going to be six, in my opinion, Mm -hmm. Um, which is a bad place to be because I hate saying that word. Yeah. Six. It's very hard. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Um, But I think uh, if he had skated clean, Mm -hmm. he would have at least been kind of in the mix. And I thought maybe he was going to do okay because there's obviously no pressure Mm -hmm. in a way. I mean, of course, there's pressure. You made the Grand Prix final. But, like, it's kind of clear. Enjoy that you made it. You're not really going to be competing technically and stuff. So I thought maybe there would be a liberating quality to that. And there wasn't. I was, was surprised that he did not at yeah. least skate the free program with more freedom. I thought maybe the short, he'll be... And the short was okay. They did ding him on the combination. Uh, I think in the free, it's encouraging that there were no pops. Because a couple years ago, if Adam was tentative, mm, it would be yeah. he was a popper. And now he's at least right. going for it and falling. He's been relatively consistent throughout the season. So that's why I was right. surprised by the mistakes. I was... Too. I was yeah. hoping it could be like a joyous performance moment. Yeah. yeah. Well, at least he did not peak at the Grand Prix final. And look, on Yuri on Ice, there is always someone crying in the bathroom at the Grand Prix, and they will come like a warrior into Kansas City. So that's right. That's right. Yeah. So we're building the fluff piece. That's what we're doing. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You know. <laughs> um, yeah. I think I do, that... I do love the bird program. Yes, I do. I really, yeah, it, it has certainly you know grown throughout the season as well. Uh, what do you think about Javi's mistakes here? I was quite shocked that he did not finish on the podium. If you to, you know Javi Fernandez has kind of been that reliable guy. You know maybe yeah. he'll be silver medalist, bronze medalist here, but I was surprised that Javi slipped off of the podium here. That was yeah. really the the game changer. Yeah, I was surprised. Um, I wanted. In the short, it was that weird fall, or the not fall on the quad sal, right? Mm -hmm. Take note, Madison Chalk. Do you see how he, like, lifted his hands up so he didn't actually fall? That was pretty (laughs) impressive that he did that. (laughs) And then when he, like, fell in, like, a crab position after the triple axle, I was like, what kinds of falls are these? Yes. (laughs) Like, these are so weird. Like, they have to be weird to him also. Um, but man, when he does those quads, if everyone is doing the quad to the best of their ability, I think his are some of the prettiest. His are very pretty, especially the yeah. quads out when he does it. And yeah. the and flow the out yeah. and stuff. He looked so tired. And I don't mean stamina wise. I meant like it looked like he had bags under his eyes during the final mm-hmm. or during the free. And I was like, you can't sell an Elvis show program if you're tired. And he was just like on fumes. It was a little upsetting to watch. Yeah. Well, you know, he's interesting is that I don't want to blame anyone, <laughs> but I thought it was strange that Javi flew to New York a week before the Grand Prix final to do an opening of Bryant Park, which to me is like the opening of an envelope for a skater <laughs> of that magnitude. And I yeah. thought, why tire yourself out? by flying across the Atlantic to only fly back before the final. Or wait, right. he would be flying from Toronto to still. Why are we doing a show the week the before? The fact that you took that time and maybe yeah. a time when it, yeah, you didn't have it. Um, yeah, it was weird. And I wonder, you know, he had that kind of carefree thing. Remember, I remember one time when he came off in the Kiss and Cry and Brian was like, well, I think if the points, if I think we can muster out a sec. And he was like, okay, whatever. Yeah. But, I think a little bit he's losing that, okay, whatever, we're just here to have a nice time. And it's getting a little serious. Yes. And then I always fear if someone that carefree and fun gets too serious, it, they skate it. Yeah. Yeah, kind of if he wanted this too bad. Oh, did you know Bo Brova, when she wasn't skating in the ice dance event, she was commentating uh, for Russian television. What did she say? She's a big hobby fan. Um, And she, I mean, aren't we all? But I think that she, um, 
she was like, I think he should win. He's my favorite. But I feel like this is someone who's trying too hard. I could see that. Who knows about the result here. And we kind of used to associate him with the guy that was just like, well, skate. If I win, that's great. Ah. He does very well when he's relaxed. And, you know, at the World Championships last year, he said that he you know, had out terrible days with the heel injury and, you know, the skates and, the, you know, he just went out and <laughs> was like, I'm going to wing it. And he won. Because you sort of thought it was Hanyu's anyway. So he yeah. was like going in for two or three or something. And then, yeah. yeah. Swoosh. We, yeah. The mind is crazy, isn't it? Well, how about our little pocket rocket, Shoma Uno, who is like the little engine that could this year. I mean. It really could. Yeah. She overperform not overperforms but he really goes out and nails to the best of his ability he skates like it's the last performance of his life you Every know what time. i mean each yes. time and you're like where are you getting that energy from yeah. <laughs> but his coach has that same kind of enthusiasm right every time she's like ah like she's super excited <laughs> um i miss shoma's when did he do the modern dance program was that last season or was that two seasons ago he 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 had the real modern dance short program, and I, that's when I was that fell a in short love. last year. I thought it was okay, and then and then turned out was the long last yes, year. Yes, turned out yes, was the long last I was, year because I was like meh about that, but I was so over the moon about the modern dance. Yeah. And when he does modern dance, he's better than anybody, in my opinion. But then when he does these kind of like just generic like beautiful programs, he's just good. Right, I so really I like the free. Even with the screaming woman, I really enjoy it. I have well, to Lala wins because she was like, "Why does it sound like a Disney villainess?" <laughs> like <laughs> laughing in the background, and now I can hear nothing but her. <laughs> so she is correct, but yeah. the the la the latter half of the program to me is so strong choreographically, mm -hmm. to whereas the other men have these generic programs, and he is has like actual. There's fire. Structure and fire and the way that he ends with the headless spin and the corner to me is so strong and the footwork to the other men that I really think that his program... Well, would... And I'm sorry, isn't that a whole prerequisite for interpretation or choreography or yes. something is proportion yes. or whatever? That's what that is. Yeah, it's not him doing crossovers for two minutes and then backloading his program or something. His yeah. weakness to me is still that landing position and we see him turn out of the jumps. You never he cuts like this crazy angle at every yeah. landing. Yeah. And they were yeah. talking on Eurosport about the falls he takes and how injured he is. And you think like, well, if he's trying to check, I mean, he has to fight those landings more than any other skater where he is just right. trying to hold the edge based on his technique. It's really right. interesting. And I think that that may be the thing that prevents him from being first place as opposed to second or third is that, I always wonder if he can be 100% consistent for two programs to be world champion because I think he has right. everything else uh, right. to be there. I mean, the quad yeah. flip is incredible. And... Beautiful, yeah. And that final triple axle half loop triple flip thing, I'm yes. like, <laughs> it's amazing. It's, it's his, amazing. It's his last program on earth, and he's going see? out there to win it. <laughs> and don't worry, there's a cantilever. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> But he excites me to no end every time. Yeah. And, you know, oh, I yeah. thought he was going to be probably fourth here. He finished third. And, That's where I had him. Yeah. You know, well, and missing the combo in the short, I thought he was toast. But yeah. sure enough. It's so funny because we, you know, we always think we count so many how many world medals they have. But I, I put the Grand Prix final medals up there kind of close. So I'm like, well. Well, this was a pretty exciting competition. Yes. Like, these were some pretty stellar men. It doesn't always happen this way, in my opinion. Well, and I was like, this was good. And could have gone one of several ways. Yeah. How about the yeah. stellar ladies? Because this was interesting. Okay. Because especially as the way it was playing out when Medvedeva missed the first jump and others had skated so beautifully before her. Correct. First, what was your take on the result? Do you think that she deserved to win? I, okay, <laughs> my problem with Eteri, or whatever the coach is. Eteri Dudbaridza. Yeah, yeah, that old drag queen. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. It's lovely. Um, she has them all go to Ilya Averbuch, yes. right? Who of loves a dark program. Russia, Holocaust fame. <laughs> yes, oh my gosh. 
Remember Julia? She looked like she was like left at the Auschwitz gift shop looking for like, you know, in the beginning of that program. And now here we have uh, the, it's not only that she answers the telephone, Dave, mm-hmm. it's that she answers it and then it's like, <laughs> it's the facial expression <laughs> after the telephone. Oh, it's so offensive. But the laughing and the picture take, it's like a pantomime, right? Yes. It's like a circus pantomime. And I think she's actually good. I like her. I don't like, like Hanyu, I like her. I don't like the programs. And that's the thing. They, they won't change the formula. Why would they? I mean, it's totally working according to the results. So they're not going to mess with success. But I was like, if you gave her a quality program with beautiful lines and things like that, I think she could really do it. So I think at least she's a good skater. I think Sandra's available. I'm just saying, but they would never call her. Well, I don't her. Email her. Yeah. We'll hook yeah. you up. <laughs> <laughs> her instead. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like she would cultivate uh, her. And I think Pogorelia should call Sandra. Yeah. Because I think that I think it's in there. Mm-hmm. I think they just keep circling around these same kind of choreographers that don't do them any favors. Well, but, but they're winning, so who knows? Maybe he'll bring back a time for peace for. Um... <laughs> <laughs> or or what? Or the next idea? <laughs> was the last lift in that program supposed to be Tower Two falling? I was always wondering it. Oh, yes. Or her triple flip fall. I was like, what does this represent in an I-11 program? When See, I wasn't fall? even kidding about the hour two in A Time for Peace. I've legit always yeah. wondered that. But um, okay. Okay. <laughs> that's I how real we get with the Ilya Alberbrook programs. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're terrible, So, <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> they're, you know, I think that maybe they miss some of the cultural references on why this is problematic. But I really think that Medvedeva is such a warrior champion. The one thing I was thinking about, you know, we were watching her, watching Golden Spin. If Gracie makes any mistake on her opening Lutz combo, you know that the rest of the program is toast. Like, right. it's not even right. a question. And I couldn't right. think of any other girl, lady, sorry, in the world that's really capable of just adding a triple triple later in the program like she's kurt browning at the 91 worlds i well and then it's also that thing though is that this practice where she kind of has been practicing that yes. all along she throws a triple toe after every flip and jump she does yes. you know yeah even it's if not it's not just to triple. intimidate the other competitors even though it is <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's two birds one stone yes yeah, okay. <laughs> Because I thought, I think, like, all this, like, idea of trying to revamp and do this and do that, that could throw you, too, is the first time you want to try something on that kind of stage. But it's not really because she practices all of that crazy, crazy stuff in her world. People used to make that big deal that Michelle Kwan changed her program. Instead of a double axle, she did a triple toe at the end of the program at 96 Worlds. Medvedev but that was the plan. Another she, yeah. triple triple yeah. later in the program. Yeah. Like that right. in the second half. Like that right. is exactly. <laughs> and solid. She didn't eke it out. Yeah. yeah. And she had led in the program and was story. like, what happened? You know? Like, <laughs> I, know. I was like, we could have a bit of a poker face, dear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm intrigued by her. I'm hoping Yulia comes back. She is my sentimental favorite in the ladies mm-hmm. event but mm-hmm. yeah i do think that medvedeva i think i still think she deserves a lot of those scores yeah. i really do yeah I, she... I wasn't outraged that she won no what did you make of anna Pogorelia a year ago you never knew what you were going to get well do you remember she okay i have to my friend dina was like she's russian and she was like you know, the w- Russian girl to actually look out for is Pokorelia. And I was like, you are such a liar. What are you talking about? She's like, and she had seen that Rise of the Phoenix program. And she was like, it's in there. And I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> You've seen her do like slip and slide on the ice. And I was beginning to think, I miss that mess. I miss her being a mess. And then she came out for her opening pose for the short program and she tripped and it looked like she had like pulled her back. And I was like, Oh, here she is. <laughs> Here's the girl I know. But I was like, Oh my gosh, you just give that girl a bronze medal. Mm-hmm. 
she's ready to go. She's like a totally different skater. Yeah. It's ridiculous. I think it's the sexy dress in the free skate. That's it's so sexy. Like I was like, that's it's like current, it's cool, it's like she carries she ha- herself like So it's a Misha G program. Do you think that's his idea? I don't even know. For the guy that now I'm always is, are, do you follow him on Instagram? I'm always confused. Like Misha, are you training? Are you choreographing? Are you doing both? You're a self-promoting champion skater slash choreographer, like doing Gracie's choreography yeah, yeah, better than her she but if he dressed Anna, like it works. I like that short program. I actually like it more than the Morozov long program. Mm-hmm. I just get excited when that music comes on that's based on Pasha's free skate. Uh, that's based on the Memorial Requiem. Obviously, uh, yeah, okay. the Spanish team used that music at the Olympics and everyone loved it. And it was mm. so fantastic. But She does it well. I mean, she had problems with the loop or whatever yeah. this time around. But I, I would like her just... to engage more, to stretch more, but she's on the right track. Uh, again, yeah. I call Sandra. <laughs> well, know, and she... then, because again, it's almost like a Carolina y thing. Mm-hmm. I was like, there's a Carolina y thing inside of you, this like kind of like sexy extended thing that you're not utilizing. More your... potential than Polina ever had to be that kind of Carolina thing. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Well, and then. Uh, she does do like a 25 minute setup for the lots. So that kind of takes some time out of the program, <laughs> but she lands it. So, you know, more power to you. Yeah. I don't think that her transitions are on the level of mid Vita yet, but as we look to the world championships, she's someone that you cannot count out if anything happens. So that's... I think she and mid are the solid two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think everyone's fighting for that third spot over there in Russia. Do you, right? do you see Rudy Nova getting the third spot at this point? <sighs> Well, it's hard to say because I think this will come down to some games, mm-hmm. some federation games. We know Tarasova is all about Radionova. Mm-hmm. And she's like, oh, this is just a puberty problem. Don't worry about it. Yeah. And I was like, no, this is kind of a no skating skills problem. Well, the technique is a problem, especially yeah. because she doesn't have a neck, really. And that's not, nothing that she can well, change. She but also she skates, you know, yeah. like all forward. Yeah, it's. Yeah. Even when, when she, she does the face. lats, the, the the shoulders are really kind of raised up here. And it's, you know, as she's gone through puberty, it's kind of affected that jump where even on a good day, it can be scratchy. So, And the program, I mean, her turn dot program, at least some of the moments in the beginning, she's responding to the musical beats, like with movement that complements it. And I'm like, hey, and then she just drops it. So she's a Um, musical person and loaded with personality. The positions just aren't always there. But she is someone who is such a personality for skating. If we needed to cast the reality show, that's who I would want to watch on a daily basis. Or in a tour. She could go sell some pop song like crazy. Who cares if her shoulders are rolled? Do you know what I mean? But like... She can roll around to Whitney Houston like no other. Okay? (laughs) (laughs) Hashtag never forget. Okay. Yes. Um, But she's... I was okay with her sixth here. Yeah. I didn't anticipate it. I thought it was going to be Maria, but I was actually kind of glad Maria was ahead. Maria got a little lucky with this caller, I have to say, on some of those jumps when you rewatch yeah. them. The caller was yeah. a bit generous uh, with her. To me, Maria's programs are not yet memorable or on the same level or impactful, but she's certainly consistent, and that could... Put her I in. think she has a pretty back. She does. Do I just, yeah. yeah, like it's especially then compared to like Radianova. And when they skate back her, to back, you're like, oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Someone is standing up straight with a wide back and it's like nice posture. I was like, the rest can come, right? Yeah. The edges, the thing, like maybe they'll come. She's young. But again, in Russia, it's like, now is your moment. Take it or you lose forever. Yes. But like, I, I kind of thought she had some good potential. She looked so tall. Yes. Five, seven or something like that. So stop growing. <laughs> stop but growing like, now. With Paulina's height problems, she kind of had different jump problems that Maria doesn't seem to have. And she's using, classical music nerd, she's using music of Schnitke, who's like one of those forgotten composers because he was around in the Soviet era. So we never heard much of his music. So I'm kind of like, snaps to you. Russian pride, bringing out the lesser-known yeah. Soviet-era composers. It's nice. 
but I kind of liked her. <laughs> what do you think about Miyahara at this point? You know, obviously Sutoko has had some issues with her jumps throughout the year, getting the calls, trying to adjust, you know, some consistency issues. Where do you see her in this trajectory in her season? I guess the biggest thing, because it, it came, it really boiled down to her to like, did you think Satoko was supposed to be second or did you think she was really supposed to be third? Mm -hmm. And I was pretty thrilled that she was second, but yeah. I know that there are arguments for why people really thought Anna deserved to be higher. It's, are you going for detail or are you going for big, broad, like strokes and things like that? Like Satoko's special to me and I think she hits a nerve with American audiences in a way that like is a throwback to like all those when we were so dominant yeah. in lady skating and the she's very spiral. reminiscent of Yuka to me in terms of just the skating ability yeah who also had a huge American fan base and yes. by the way the American judge placed her first yeah. in the short program so I think that I goes to like, skating taste I, yeah for sure yeah not taste isn't having it or doesn't it's, having it in skating what you prefer skating preference so yeah yeah she sparkles it's so clean it's so nuanced she's listening to the music when she does her triple double double the double loop at the very end when she has both arms up it looks balletic i was like this is so lovely but i understand in person mm -hmm. that it's tiny and the jumps bother people but i was like but it's so wonderful I and like she's to coached see by Mia Hamada, who is like curing cancer with that Marin Honda, who unfortunately had to pull out. <laughs> Bro, that was so sad for the flu or whatever. I know. Yeah. Karen Kadavy did. It. Terrible. <laughs> Soon. Soon. Okay. Soon. But I'm, I'm a big Satoko fan, and yeah. I really and it's getting to the planet. And then I was also thinking about the Duchesnes. Remember, they came out with that whole VHS with each planet. They did the whole thing. It was very odd. It was very French. Um, but I just, she has such excellent taste in her costumes and her music and her choreography. So I don't understand why she's not winning all the choreography points either. Well, speaking of the French, how do you feel about Marie France's vision for Ice Dance and, and the current world that we are living in? How are, you know, what is your take? Dave? I am so riled up about all the things Dan. <laughs> Marie France single-handedly saved the sport of ice dance. <laughs> because here's the thing. I am 100% pro that French team. Okay. And did you, If you ever watch um, Tanif White uh, commentate, she, call, she keeps calling her Papa Daki. And I was like... <laughs> Can you not? Because that sounds really odd and offensive. Um, I think they are everything I want mm -hmm. in an ice dance pair. They're a little messy. Yeah. Question about it. they? Uh, they are messy, and especially they, the short dance. Always, every year. It's... Yeah. Yeah, they've always been nervous competitors. Like I remember at Europeans that they're like their first big breakout season. And I was like, oh, that is tight. And at Worlds, it was tighter. But you were like, just be good enough. Because you still want to reward everything that they're doing, right? I'd rather have messy and beautiful than like Virtue and Moyer are virtuosic, mm -hmm. right? It's, oh my, they're masterful. Mm -hmm. But I just don't respond in a visceral way the way I do to the French. So I And I know that. a lot of people will disagree. It's a European aesthetic almost versus the North American aesthetic, which is interesting because they're coached, you know, by the same people. Yeah. But the and Johnny Weir, um, he was like, well, the thing about the French is they, they just, you know, and he was making fun of it. He's like, they're so emotional and they feel the music. And I was like, uh, yeah. Like, why are you making fun of that? That's ex that's exactly why I'm obsessed with them. That would be it was more why art people. And less yeah, the one thing I think is that in they don't perform outwardly as much as where yeah. they're more like we are going to skate beautifully and you can appreciate us. And yeah. whereas Tessa and and they're even like that in their interviews where Tessa and Scott are more right. made to be kind of performers, right. whereas the French are more artistic. Um, it's interesting. I think that maybe they could have a little bit more, they could amp up the drama, especially when she does that like move in the beginning where she like 
looks and the turns like that you need to really mm. connect find that person in the audience and really right you know own that movement to them and you know right. you know just amp it up a little bit to bring it home because it is a really striking piece and i think it is more challenging than their pieces that they've done in the past they're the kind of people in the short dance that when you have to confine them to a certain rhythm they seem to just struggle a Buff bit under the under the restrictions i mean the other thing is like I don't even know what I was going to say. But has I would their short watch dance music ever gotten in your head? The French? Yeah, where there's like, you ain't got the class. <laughs> I will like <laughs> sing it all weekend. I've downloaded it on my yes. <laughs> that is amazing. That is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite line. Every I, you know, I, I know that the, the, the common consensus is that they prefer the Virtue and Moyer short dance as well. well. I still like friends. I really do. I, and I like the lips. To me, we've also still never seen it. How about Scott get to the Purple Rain part? Do you not just like lose your mind when it's a lunge and then it I becomes Purple Rain? I appreciation. Okay. I'm always like, wow, that's great. Okay. Look how sharp that is. Yeah. Wow, that looks hard. Wow, they just did that with such precision. Like, that is fun. But the French, I'm like melted into a chair at the end. So even could, the short dance. Yeah, to me the free dance, yeah. I could skew French on because I'm not sold on changing to latch. I always feel like pure artistic drama wins in dance, but when you're saying something, and to me, I'm following the story of Virtue and Moyer of the free dance, and to me it goes from like an A plus to like an A minus when it goes to latch and you're just like, that's kind of generic. And that's kind yeah, of like I, fake yeah. emotion to me. It's like that cheesy, it's like that cheesy key change in yeah. like some like bubblegum pop song. You're like, of course, here's the key change. You know, it was kind of that. Now Sandra, who we love, she was like, to me, it may, becomes like an aha moment. But for me, it was a little on the nose. I and it was, also, yeah. the, it comes in full blast and like, uh, I go my. from like salivating over everything they're doing to being like forcing myself to really enjoy it and being like, no, this is, this is good. This is, this is, yeah, to we me, can make it through to the end. Yeah. It's not the satisfying <laughs> conclusion to what they're doing right. for me. I just don't find Sam Smith to be that. I don't find him to be on the same level as the first two thirds of the music and what they're saying yeah, and you out. they're better than the latch part for they sure. do some really interesting things that marie france does with both teams with mirror images which she does uh -huh. and it's something that the french haven't done before in their other programs and tessa and scott do it as well throughout the dance it's something i really like structurally that we have never seen from marina that i think is really interesting uh I think there are steps. I mean, there's like midline step sequence or whatever that was. Like that was insane. And there's circular pat. Like I was like, this is this is next level stuff. Like no question yeah. about it. The French looked very nervous, especially after Tessa and Scott skated. The one thing because they don't skate with that same swagger. They did at the World Championships. They skated like they knew they were going to win. They had just no doubt that this was right. their right. moment. Uh, the thing to me is that if you're looking at little details. Tessa Virtue has like the best leg line we've seen since Maya Usava. And right. uh, Krilova, it's that good. Um, obviously, she was recruited for the ballet in Canada. So, <sighs> Papadakis, not Papadaki or whatever, as a. Uh, oh it's horrible. <laughs> you know, Marie France refers to them as Gabby Guillaume. So, Gabby Guillaume. Uh, Gabby. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. They, to me, her knee always looks a little bit bent, even if it's not. It just has that look of a knobby okay. knee. And mm -hmm. then because she's in the Adea skate, the skate, the foot doesn't point as much at the end. And to me, I'm right. like, oh, that's a plus two versus a plus three on a couple of these lifts or elements that mm -hmm. Tessa and Scott, and when you start splitting hairs, I think I would give some of the elements to Tessa and Scott, you know, right. and then debate the components. Yes, yeah. and that's kind well. Of the French, the French have all season left a lot of points on the table. Mm -hmm. Like even when he stepped out of that one thing or, or what, like they, he, they're losing two points here, three points there. So mm -hmm. I just see the results and see such a gap. But I was like, they gave them that gap though. 
we've not really seen them both clean and to see who they prefer if they're really both clean. But it seems like it's going to take a lot for the French to be clean. Now, have you Because I used to think Tessa was nervous, right? Wasn't she the nervous competitor kind of in the past? In the Tessa and Scott series, she sure was. But who knows how much yeah. of that was in the editing. But uh, Okay, okay. Also, when you have the winning streak, I think it's easy to be more confident. Uh, as now we're seeing that the French are having a losing streak for the first time in a while, and they have not on top of that. Um, yeah, interesting thing, though, in the kiss and cry. <laughs> Do you ever notice that Marie France, like, pets Cizeron <laughs> and his leg? She's yeah. always, like, they always, she always sits next to him. Like, I don't he blame is her, her prized <laughs> pony, and she is always yeah. stroking him, caressing him, Good or bad, I just like watch this and it cracks me up. I'm like, Marie France, why don't her cat? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I uh, yeah, it's interesting to watch that whole dynamic to play favorites. Yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> even I thought like you knew they were going to be tight because they were showing Tessa and Scott and Gabby Yule like waiting to go on the ice and like Scott was goofing around and was like giving Gabby high fives and then he like looked to Guillaume who was like <laughs> all up tight. So He's what happened with their serious. music? Like I just like that Scott didn't like the music when it came on and he I goes I asked you because I w I went back and rewound it because I was like did because they started it, they didn't seem rushed. Like, it seemed fine. It was like, did you just not like the way you felt when you started? I didn't know if I they never missed quite... the first or second beat of it, if it didn't, if the sound came in late. I wasn't sure. Because uh, so. I, I rewound it even, and I was like, I don't get it. Because and of course, all it, of the it, music it, sounds so similar this year. There was a moment where I said, did they put the Shibutani's music on again? <laughs> I was like, wait, no. I... <laughs> <laughs> but then they got to go over to that, um, the referee with the weave from yeah. Sochi. That hugged out Elena. So I was like, Allah, mm -hmm. that is the famous Allah who hugged uh, mm -hmm. That is yeah. Pikaev's wife. Um, yeah. <laughs> what did you make of the Shibitanis here? Comparing them to the top two teams, how did you feel about you know where they are? Are they in it for the bronze? Are they hoping for... I think that being in the second after the short dance was certainly good for them at this yeah. point in the season. How do you feel about the material, their chances they're skating all of it so you know for a long time i championed them because we kept having to deal with chalk and bates as mm -hmm. the number one team mm -hmm. so i'm thrilled because i do like them they yeah. do have speed problems in yeah. person right like they were always much slower um to me it's I a think... control thing because i think that their skating skills mm -hmm. are fine they just tend to be so exacting or, exact yeah, yeah okay yeah. Well, it just seems, and I got in big trouble on Twitter for it, <laughs> going back to back, they seemed um, like kiddos. They seemed like super hardworking, mm -hmm. um, clean, well-produced students. Uh, oh, I'm sorry to say that because I love them. I think they're great for American you know, I stands, I think all of these great things, but really when you're comparing them to like the French and the Canadians, it's like, oh, it's a little less inspired and more like we are showing you this emotion, mm. not we are, we are this emotion. It's yeah. a little on the nose. And oh my gosh, I couldn't stand the ponytail. I know, I know I get it. Like, but I'm just like, oh, it's too. See, to me, the first academic. time I saw the short dance, I was so into it and mm. because it was so out of the box for them i'm like this is gross this is great but when you compare it to the other short dances i'm like yeah and the one thing they have got to change is that music edit when the songs play on top of each other uh See, I, I didn't mind it as much <laughs> mike was watching and saying is this an audio issue what is going on and i said no it does seem like my first dj moment like look how i mix it but i i randomly wasn't so offended but i understand dj lohan is on the cans yeah, <laughs> 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 but yeah. uh, <laughs> But, but the thing it is, just is that they are so awesome. good. She is actually outskating him at this better. point in their career. Sure. Yeah. He, if you watch them on the side by side twizzles, while they're both great, hers are way more confident and natural. And I noticed that mm -hmm. he starting to they choreographed in part of their program where he does like the sweeping inside spread eagle moments around her. And you know the program is uh, 
similar in style to what the French were giving us for the last two years, and they have definitely paid attention and saying that this is where dance is going right now. Right. Uh, right. But it's not as good as the original, and I just I noticed that with the shibs, they don't let it fly, and I think that's one of the things we talk about them being students. an abandon. Yeah, yeah, they never let go. It's like Michelle right. Kwan in Nagano, where she talked about where she hit that triple flip and it wasn't good and then she didn't let go at the end the ships right. never let it rip the way Meryl and Charlie did the way Tessa and Scott do and right. not that they're not putting it all on the line but they're not taking every edge to the absolute maximum that it's it a different be. kind of risk to take and, yeah. and what they are doing is they're making sure everything is exactly right which is why they were able to squeak ahead of the French because mm-hmm. the French who are just like emote 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 yeah. kind of miss a step here or there and in the big picture, I don't really care. But, of course, the scores do. So that's their angle, almost. But I don't know if they can have that abandon. It's, what it's they, certainly not taught. Yeah, I think it's what they need to, you know, yeah. that, that extra go after it. Because the French do leave some points on the table. And yeah, if, they really do. Yeah. And I think that they're going kind of the Romanian gymnast approach where you don't make any mistakes and you wait for other people to make mistakes. However, it is not getting quite the scores on the components, and they are so right. beloved in the U.S. They're those kids that have always worked hard and said the right things. And done because the right they're doing things. everything right. Yeah. They but have the right posture. Kind of, they have, yeah. They've right. been loyal to their coach. They've been, you know, like the good students. I thought this was never going to happen. I was yeah. always on board. I was like, if they stay with Marina, it's never going to happen. And then, sure enough, it happened. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't. I don't think they, even if they learn abandon quickly in like the next season going into an Olympic year, I just think third is their. Well, I think that they're going to have to. Look, there are going to be so many political pushes before the Olympic Games with different countries and different coaches that they are going to have to definitely secure up third place, if not go for the silver and, you know, be okay with third if it, you know, happens. But that's to me, it's an interesting thing there. How about the shifting of the lower teams here? The, the you know the the first group. Yes. <laughs> to okay, Hubble and Donahue going. You know, last season the fact that the ships did so well in the free really set up nationals and set up. You know, it gave the momentum for what was about to happen. It definitely, I think, planted the seed right. in the minds of the judges that this could happen. That it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> what did you, Hubble and Donahue? Did they move ahead of Chalk and Bates here, or is it kind of even after her Twizzle mistake? Because they did finish ahead, but they were last in the free dance, which is their right. stronger of the programs. So that- and again, they were ahead in the short because Madison face planted, and yes. Madison and Evan had like a dreadfully like molasses-y slow pattern. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it wasn't because they did so great. Yeah. I love their free the yes. Hubble and Donahue, yes. and I love them, him especially. That like big kick he does at the end of the short dance, I'm just like. Um, but occasionally, I still feel speed is their thing. Yes, Ch- Chalk and Bates are the fastest Americans, so it's hard to like have randomly this couple that's flying across the ice suddenly be the third ranked team, even though aesthetically. Mm-hmm. I much prefer the quality of Hubble and Donahue, right? So like, I think I that just... Hubble and Donahue, someone that used to train with them said to me, there's always something that is a little bit holding them back, whether it's in the training, whether it's in the competition, but they just haven't, they Here? haven't gotten the time. Oh, you mean with the? Yes. So okay. Wait. It's, you know, it was her twizzle at the end. And you can't just say it's because sometimes he makes as many mistakes as she does. So it's not like one mm. person holding down the team. It's, they're very much a unit, but Maybe they need to move the twizzles earlier because that is kind of an element that they can have problems with and they do it at the end of the program and they do it, right? you know, you wonder if they need to rearrange the free dance a little bit. I'm Just, so ignorant. Is, is, it, is it like in singles where they're getting a bonus for doing it at the end? Not in the not in the dance, not in the twizzle. Yeah. I just think it's where you just feel comfortable because the French right. do the... A, yeah, so why do that? Yeah, okay. I didn't know if they thought they were getting a bump or something. But. I believe this team has usually does the twizzles later, and sometimes that's a press for, preference to want you have your legs under you and right. you know feeling comfortable. But you know they got to the home stretch and that mistake happened, and I thought there goes this. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Like 
this, we were on a moment, we were following right. them, and they were about to really secure being the second American team. And to me, I think it's the dead heat at this point. I think they have the opportunity yeah. to win yeah. the Silver at Nationals, but I, you know, whereas it was written in the stars, I think it's going to be a real fight, you know, at Nationals, yeah. and it's... Well, I their their pre is so special, mm -hmm. and I think if we're going for moment, if we're going for big picture, I mean it's mm -hmm. it, it, it. I mean the chalk and Bates programs pale in comparison. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, the Bobrova program dance, really pales in comparison to me. But hey, they didn't have a major mistake in either portion of the competition, and both the American teams. Oh my gosh. I mean, well, I thought, I mean, I had hoped Hubble and Donahue in my dreams were going to somehow pull ahead of them also. Now, listen, they've gotten better, mm -hmm. all things considered. I still don't view them as great. I actually prefer Stepanova and Buchan mm. to Bobrova and Solovia. I will never forgive them for that insane asylum program. It's too, still too fresh for me. I can't deal with it. And then um, their Olympic placement was still traumatizing to me. And I was so afraid they were going to be the Russians that somehow got a bronze. Um, but I just, she's a little awkward and stiff. I mean, it's amazing. He had that terrible injury that he can bend his knee at all, but... Maybe She's a little play. country. He's a little rock and roll. <laughs> uh, and neither, um, they're, they're skating to neither country nor rock and roll, so it really doesn't help them out. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just not um, a fan. Yeah. The one thing is they have a lot of hand-to-hand -hand skating, and mm -hmm. it's not the most complex choreography. He's a very, very strong skater. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But they don't look at each other, and to me, they... Marilyn and Charlie didn't always look at each other, but they performed together like it was a unit. As a unit, yeah, exactly. Me, especially because they skate in hand to hand so often. With so, and even when they're in hold, they're not like up in you the way some of the other teams are, or the way like Krilova and her partner used to be, or Usova, where right? it was like. Hey. Yeah. And granted, Hello. that has kind of yeah. gone to absolute uh, yeah. So, yeah. in the new judging system because it's not judged as harshly especially Based in that yeah but to me they are really you know and that's the way you're supposed to you know now judge the skating skills and everything and the trends you know some of the way the choreography is determined but to it me, just seems so much simpler than everyone else's yeah so to me that's the difference you know, with them when i watch them but they did not have the mistake here so that's they are consistent and that's... yeah and, and they'll probably win i'm sure they'll win their nationals because it's clear their federation is pushing for them but again i really i like the tall russians we call them i mean i just think they they're more interesting to me hmm. um if i could have taken anyone out of the mix it would have been <laughs> but then the question i also thought to myself was who did i wish was there instead well, and Shannon Slivka really... will be mad that you even questioned that. She would have wanted you to say that you wish that Ilyenik were there. Uh, and I am a big Ilyenik fan. I didn't think that they earned it based on their performances up to this point. But, you know, there's Weaver and Poggi, there's the Italians, there's Piper and Paul, certainly a number of teams. And, you know, if you go by the score that Ilyenik... If you got the score that Oyuna got at her latest senior B, she certainly deserved to be there. So, right, yes, exactly. <laughs> or that score that Carolina got. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> I have to read a text message that I got from a skater. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, the pair event here, the cha bit of a changing of the guard of a moment that I, I think that this was interesting in this competition uh before it i went in thinking that this would be jillian and bob's moment to just no brainer yep, yeah exactly yeah and Whoop. i i did not ex you know they lost this rather than another team really beat them in, in certain respects right. although we don't right. really know because they didn't go completely cleanly but they definitely dug their own grave here um right and right. in both programs and what's strange is that they were skating clean programs before they left and their coach actually posted that on um on facebook so they, she was very thing. megan yeah. was very yeah. perplexed uh in the kiss and cry and she had quite the long statement um that i need to read because it is that long and we will okay um, here it comes yeah a dramatic reading by dave lee <laughs> <laughs> well because 
and I know that they've had a difficult couple of weeks if you've read her Instagram. Yeah, it seems, it seems yeah. like there's some tough times. Just I hope they have a nice refreshing break. Well, they're on vacation in Italy. They're having a great time. So okay. and together. So yeah. Oh, she, fun. So Megan gave a paragraph of a quote. Hit we it. are really disappointed with our performance today. We were prepared to come to this competition and have two great programs. And fortunately, we couldn't have one great program, so we have to reassess a lot of things. We struggled in the Grand Prix circuit, and we struggled here. We can't continue this season like this. We have to make a U-turn as we prepare for the second half of the season so that we can show the best of our skating and be happy and proud of ourselves when we get off the ice. This is always our main objective, and unfortunately, this week we didn't have these feelings. Sometimes you come to a competition and you don't feel comfortable. At NHK, we didn't feel completely comfortable, so we didn't skate our best. It was not a complete surprise. But coming here, we felt very comfortable. We liked the ice, we were well rested, and well prepared. It is disappointing that there's nothing specific. Maybe we'll find out what the reason is later. Maybe it's just the flow of our season. Last year our season didn't start very well, but then it peaked at the end. Maybe it's the same evolution this season's going to go. We have to go home and talk to our coaches and our choreographers and really come up with a plan for the next year. Well, kudos to a skater for just being honest and telling it like it is for once. That is, that is all of it. Yeah. yeah. That is everything she was thinking about. <laughs> I mean, I think that says it all. Uh, I do wonder at this point if the competition will get harder for them now that they have been defeated. But they were defeated last year going into the Worlds, and you just wonder. But I, I wonder if maybe they should think about... But that was different. It was more of a fight. And yes. this was more of like a, oh, no, we bombed. Yeah. I mean, they, bronze medal. I mean, she did, she landed the quad. You know what I mean? Like, things, good things were happening, but it was like they made errors so if that she, may if, haunt them. If she ever makes an error on her Lutz... The whole program can tend to get panicky, if it, especially yeah. if it you know if it happens in both programs, you know something is really off. But the right. lots to her, there's a certain way she likes to do it, and if it is off in the one, it is she's up all night before the next competition. That's but, very Debbie Thomas of her. You just have to move past <laughs> that first element. <laughs> well, they have so many points, but when it's interesting because when they started missing all of their big elements, you thought, oh. Oh, yeah. this is, yeah. yeah. Uh, it unraveled pretty quickly on the free, for yeah. sure. Like the short, it was really, you know, and I wonder, you know, we didn't talk about Kate, Caitlin Osmond and you're going to get in big trouble. Oh, for yes. Saying. Oh, let's go back. Yes, we have you to insert have her. Shift it back. Okay. Well, let's, let's talk about Caitlin Osmond at the end. We'll talk about okay, that. Okay, sounds good. Yes. Oh, sounds good. Okay, put a pin in it. Okay. Um, the thing is, the first of all, I don't understand why in the short program you are not allowed to try mm -hmm. a quad throw or a quad twist. Yeah. I don't understand. It's like in 94 when you had to see like all these girls do their double flip or something in the short yeah. program. You're like, oh, really? <laughs> like, I, I don't understand Listen, why. Listen, Tanya two-footed. I know double... she made an error on the double flip. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my, ridiculous. I'm still upset about it. Um, but so I wonder like if they could, what, what's the opposition to just trying to rack up points in the short? Yeah. I, I don't really understand that. Cause actually it seems like her chances of landing the quad are greater than maybe the triple axel. And it, said, when I was looking at the point, I don't know that it's worth it. Right. So they don't value throws or twists very highly for quads. And I think that's something that ISU really needs to look at because it's yeah. patently unfair. Uh, if, I would, it, yeah. if you take the risk, I don't see the reward all the time. You wonder right. if they should just go consistently, uh, go for consistency and, and do the throw flip or the throw lutz, but you just wonder if, you know. Because the lutz, the lutz is a base of five, five. I was getting so confused looking at mm -hmm. the, the specific judges sheet because mm -hmm. in Canada at Skate Canada, the triple axle throw was rated a 7.7. Yes. It's because the they got an flip? under rotation on the throw. They said that the, that it wasn't around in the short program. Okay. So that's fine. But even the jump from the Lutz to being 5.5 .5 base mark, mm -hmm. where do you get 7.7 .7 as the base mark for the triple axle? I don't, I don't, because it's weird. Doesn't because, that seem like an odd, an yeah. odd shift? And then it's okay. So they downgraded hers, mm -hmm. but 
not to a double then. No, so just to an incomplete what, triple. What math do they use to bring it from? It brought it from Isn't a it seven seventy percent, I believe. But I, ah, okay, you and your wisdom. That makes sense. It's <laughs> around seventy percent, if not seventy percent. Yeah. So okay, yeah. I was looking at like I was like, how did you pick, how do you pick the new? Okay, mm -hmm. then that would do it because it was five point four mm -hmm. that they were working out of, and they only got like two point four. <laughs> yeah, credit for it. That's tough. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what do you make of you know the new Chinese pairs? Obviously, they, you and Zhang had you know an error on the spin, and they wound up counting it as a fall when she put her knee down at the end of the spin. That really kind of killed uh, that things. Was, for... That was a little silly, but okay. <laughs> so you and Zhang, the last what he won a silver medal outside, years ago. Right? He won a silver medal in two thousand and six. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it's like on an outdoor rink. He made magic. Okay, so um, he is so large compared to the other men. E mm -hmm. Even these men are tall and lean, and he is such like... So the other skaters refer to him as Shrek. <laughs> okay, oh my gosh, that's correct, actually. In a loving way, I, though, I don't have they to be, all yeah. love him. They all and think he's, he's wearing the... a shirt that kind of accentuates that odd difference. And you know, those girls are so... I don't want to say frail because that's too negative, but... Tiny. They're quite slight. Yeah, and um, the difference is a little mm -hmm. jarring for me, but I mean, I really thought I was gunning when I first heard about this switch mm -hmm. over the summer at the exhibition display of partner swapping that Peng and Jin were going to be maybe a little more interesting. So I think that their program is more interesting, but... Even though it's ripped off with the... Well, that is ripped off from Jamie Saleh and David Peltier. It is. I was like, okay, that's pretty obvious. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I but like it. Cool. Yeah, it's cute. It works for them. The one thing that I think is funny is that they do the choreographic, the interesting choreography where they do the double axles from where they're not looking at each other in the circle. And I'm thinking like, this is not the girl I would give the interesting pattern to. This is the girl I would give the easiest pattern of all correct, time correct. to. How about just all crossovers? Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> just, yeah. yeah she, she really unraveled, um, Peng did, in the, uh, in the free. Yeah. It was upsetting. And I, again, I don't mean to be dismissive about her size, but it, it was on some of the the landings of the jumps, it seemed weak. But then they land the throws in the strongest positions possible. So you, yeah, you wonder. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. These I girls are obviously strong in, in their own way. It's, yeah. And they have the willpower of and Jillian Michaels. I mean, this is incredible. When they land those it's, throws, yeah. it's just incredible. Uh, yeah. I think it's interesting going forward to see whether you and Jang, whether this will work out for them. I mean, they put them together to win an Olympic gold medal. And... If they're yeah, because they, I mean, they beat, uh, yeah, they were second, but they lost what, like five points for that silly fall thing. Yes. And because he, he, she lost the spin, or they lost one revolution or something, whatever it was. But you know, it seemed if Taras and Morozov are going to be the top Russian pair going into the Olympics, I think the Chinese have a very strong chance at contending with them because Taras and Morozov have a tendency to open up on like side-by-side -side triples. One will do like a two and a half total. Right. Sometimes these freak things happen. Right. They're not the team that's the sparkliest. I mean, they have immense quality. I would give them a lot of GOE, especially for the positions and in the lifts. And they, you know, they really hit things where a lot of the Chinese do not have very beautiful lift positions. Yeah, they're where... very classic looking, yeah. which is why I get so angry at their like Yanni music. If your coach looks like Elton John, they should be coming up with more quality music choices than this like <laughs> Yanni feed. Like yes. what is, and I blame her. I blame you, Nina, because you have these these pairs and they with these exquisite lines, these exquisite lift positions, the free legs on these throws, they're like on the money every time. Can they skate to some classical music and just be beautiful and full of line and elegance instead of cheesy? I don't... This is the team that gave us Lionel Richie. They gave I us... Know. I know. It doesn't make a lick of sense because it doesn't even go with their style. Their style to me is very classical. And she doesn't use... So she hasn't like failed this badly with her other teams. That's the thing with right. the, in terms of the right. music. Uh, I really liked a lot of Stobolvis programs. I even liked the Adams Family program. You know, there was something to it. She sold it. It 
let's not get carried away. <laughs> <laughs> Comparatively <laughs> speaking, I... That's right, that's right. Uh, but, you know, even with Voloshazar and Trenkov, like, you know, that short program, to me, was much more interesting than the Jesus Christ Superstar, because they were, they're also classically trained. Go for it. You yeah. know what I mean? But whatever. Yeah. It's just me. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, going forward. The judges, obviously, I think, are responsive to... The, you know their qualities and and they have a, there's always going to be pushback when a team wins because of athleticism like the canadians there's always going to be a push for the artistic side i right. think that that's just right. the pendulum that swings i think that the team that could best marry the two is probably sway and han if they uh come back and can be healthy they just posted their short program at a, like a hockey exhibition like just like an hour ago or something like that Does it, so everybody get on it get on it will it make me want to go to a hockey game i mean they because i no, because there's too much clutter in the imagery on the ice. Like oh. it's the lines and the ads. And no, no, who can? I okay. can't deal with it. Um, but the, so they premiered it, and it's a blues. It's the the blues that um, the blues Dice for Kluke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sylvia um, Mitova's floor music from 1991. In case oh, you're there it is. You got. I got nothing. Oh, there. that old song. You know. <laughs> that, well, that old yeah. <laughs> Taras and Morozov are skating to Aurelia Dobre's uh, 80s floor music from the 87 world championships in Rotterdam. So that is well, think about that. Think and that's about the right time for that. <laughs> it's about 1987, not 29 years ago. That was her moment. Uh, <laughs> 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 I did miss I did miss Eliona and Bruno here big time. Yeah, I, I mean, want to know how her ankle is doing. Is it like Carrie Struggs? What's going on? We, you know, we don't have full reports. Uh, you know, does Bella Caroli have to come and carry her off of the podium? Off the, uh, yeah, exactly. I, uh, but getting back to Caitlin Osmond, so she just missed the podium here. I thought, okay, a lot of people are always shocked whenever a Canadian lady does well. But there's also a thing is, is Osmond polished or is she sloppy? Uh, there, Because I think that she has a very beautiful upper neck situation going on where she, her shoulders and her head Present. is like... And it happy. creates an energy yeah. that like fills the energy. And I'm sure that's what's getting a lot of these points. The the Eurosport commentators who could not possibly have dissed Satoko anymore, mm -hmm. they were like... Um, just kept complaining about how she was going to do better than Osmond and the long or whatever. But I mean, Osmond really does have this kind of these high jumps, the star quality that kind of emanates. The problem from... with her jumps, they are high and they've always done, they've <laughs> always been like this. Is then they go like that. And yeah. it's like, Robbie, stop this. Stands. Yeah, exactly. It's just like, like right herself. It's like she's being pulled in the air. But that's going to make it difficult to consistently do the triple triples. And she consistently triple doubles uh, in the free yeah. skate. And you watch, yeah. you know, she missed the double axle triple toe. She's just that skater who doesn't get always the ride out on the first jump to do. I don't know much about her coach other than that he coaches her. Frank Carroll is know? very um, supportive of him. Okay. And I know that Jose okay. Picard recommended Robbie Wall, yeah. So okay. Okay. it's uh, well, he's supposedly a very, you know, strong coach. But yeah, that's okay. definitely something I think is a little bit her uh, that they have to. But a, a couple of the Canadian ladies kind of adjust in the air. Dale Men can as well. So mm -hmm. it's just interesting. Um, they both look strong. I think that Osmond's program is choreographically stronger than either one of the Americans this year. But she doesn't always execute it 100%. But she has real choreography at the end. I mean... She's a real factor. She's she, a real factor now. You know, she goes for, I mean, her falling leaf into the choreography. I mean, it's really a nice program. And I think that it yeah. suits her. And I... Uh, just a little thing, only because I'm singing La Boheme right now. So her La Boheme cuts are rather comical to me because... <laughs> There, um, and you can compare it to Rent. I, I, there are the two women, mm -hmm. right? There's Zeta, who's like kind of this, like, I'm trying to think of the appropriate word. So there's word. a stripper and a lesbian in Rent. <laughs> yeah. Who are they in comparatively Rent, yeah. in La Boheme? <laughs> yes. So Musetta is the is the stripper, and so Mimi, Quantum yes. and Bo, which is what she's skating to, mm -hmm. is like light my tonight. candle. 
from Rent. It's oh. a real like sensuous strip teasey kind of thing. And then it goes into this part where she's like throwing plates and yelling at the waiter. And then all of a sudden it shifts to the other character and she's dying like out of nowhere in, in Caitlin's program. So it's a little jarring. I was like, okay, first you were playing like the coquettish, like bimbo. So she has to actually get the illness. So this is where she needs an Ashley Wagner moment where her makeup is flaking. Yes. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> yeah, I yes. Well, I was like, or be the same character through the whole time. Like Mimi has other, me I, well, whatever. So that's just me being an opera diva, but whatever. But I'm it's a fan fun. of hers. Well, speaking of divas, mm, the grand dame of skating. Carolina Costner came back. And okay, told. really quick before we finish, we have to mention, I thought Charlie and Julianne were going to be better. Yes. <laughs> I thought they were going to be more of a factor. And, um, and Bert's pants win a special prize <laughs> for this pair event. So I have to say about That's, Julianne and Charlie is that they just skated so well at their challenge, which is like the sectionals in Canada before to make their nationals. They do it a little bit differently. It's going to be a factor. Yeah, they just yeah. did so well before they came here. So I don't know what... They still have their own look. I don't know if that's Marie France. I didn't quite understand her connection there. It didn't look Marie france so to me, Marie but it... Marie France worked on their free skate. So, okay. And then Shaylin and someone else did their short program. Marie France and David Wilson did the free. Uh, I'm just so sick of the Julie Marcotte program <laughs> that I'm just like... It's, it's, it's something totally different. So it's nice to just see a different approach. So. I have to say, I'm such a fan of that. Um, I am such a fan of the Earth Song program that Julie Marcotte did that she can do no wrong to me this year. <laughs> okay. So, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> moving on to the Grand Doms. What did you make of Carolina? Because I got a text from one of her competitors, and <laughs> his competitor <laughs> said. Bring it. Um, <laughs> this competitor, as I'm going back in time, uh, so she said, are you watching the Golden Spin of Zagreb? And I, I said, yeah, yes. You know, she goes, did you watch Costner talk about generous judging? And then she goes, <laughs> list, list the jumps in the free skate, you know, you know, list the jumps and it goes, but not like before. Slow. And spins were sucky, but she is major skinny, so good for her. And that, I was like, oh, oh my goodness. All of which is not untrue. I mean. <laughs> it's just the way skaters talk. Yeah, now, it's like pretty good away. Yeah. The short program, I like the Led Zeppelin program more than the avant-garde program with the noise that's going on. Um, that... The know. short program music was upsetting to me. I know that Kurt Browning kind of used the same music in 93 or whatever, but it was so different. And the sound system in Zagreb was offensive. Well, it so was, was the camera work because they were scrolling too fast constantly on the live feed. <laughs> and there was an error that would come up. But anyway. Camera panning, camera panning. <laughs> but the, I and think the sound Phil Hirsch was, like, was operating the camera is what was happening. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, looking for quads. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, Carolina, the, here's the thing when I talked about, you know, Patrick, where when you get older to have it all come together. So mm -hmm. we famously, you know, Carolina looked like TOS, tired old, when at um. the Cup of China in 2013, it looked like her back was injured. I didn't know if she could get the jumps back, and she pulled it together by the Olympics. So I will not count her out, but I will just <clears> say <throat> that you can see the time has yeah. passed on her in the agility of her body on some of the spins. As it would anyone. As it would anyone who took that much time away. Yeah. When you're out of the game, when you're trying to get these combo spins back, that to me is where I see the difference in her. I think that she can do a consistent Rosano. I question if she could do a triple flip, triple toe. I think maybe yeah. she could pull it out once a year. Uh, I do not know about the triple lutzes. It's going to be very difficult for her to Because be... we, didn't, we didn't see the lutz. We just saw the flip. Well, But, you know, this summer she had nothing but, like, toe and sow. So I was like, if you got the, the flip and the loop back, I don't know, maybe the rest will come back? I just wonder what her intentions are. I don't think that she can contend against the other girls the way the judging is going. Not the right. way that they deserve, but if they're going to keep giving 
Rodianova her component scores. I mean, where what are Costner is going to be eleven point five? I'm I'm not sure right, yeah, exactly. where she's going to get exactly. the advantage. So yeah, that is what I wonder about uh, as well. I and think she has to know that to a point. You know, she's coming back like Katarina Vitt to make a statement for Sarajevo. <laughs> to be for United Italy. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. I will still okay. say that Carolina is the world's greatest girlfriend. She will lie for you. She will... Um... <laughs> she will literally lose access to her sport for you for a brief period of time. <laughs> Look, she is loyal to the nth degree and mm -hmm. stayed with mm -hmm. Lori Nickel, the choreographer, and she is... Well, I think, the, I think the Vivaldi's nice, the, yeah. the free... I think it's nice. The short program I just am not a fan of. But. I would like her to go back to the Led Zeppelin. I like that Carolina has so many different options of what she can do with her blades that she could just give you all the different kind of programs we could ever. Spanning imagine. the generations. Yeah, she can do all the music. I think that Lori may enjoy working with her more than she enjoys working with Gracie. I'm just saying that I think that Carolina gives her more opinions. So Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or more performant. <laughs> so you can always tell who Lori's favorite is. And uh, watching Zagreb, they're like, oh, it's Carolina still. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah, clearly. Yeah. Fair um, I, I just wonder about that. But I'm excited. You know what? She gets usually gets better with the competitions. So I'm thinking we're, we're going to be stressed out, realistically, right. every time right. she skates. We're going to be nervous. Yeah, like Europeans. Europeans will just be her and all those Russians. I think that she will do decently well at Europeans because the Italian girl usually does decently well at Europeans. The field is not as strong as it could be. You know, yeah. I think that... Um, the but French... she may have three Russians ahead of her. Look, as long as she beats the French girl who changes costumes mid-program, I think that it is... Think a... there's, there's like a viral video going around of a girl from Frozen and she's singing Let It Go in a live show and she tries to do the costume change really fast and it fails. It's pretty funny. And then I was like, oh, that reminds me of that French girl. What if her costume change fails in the middle of the program? So she is my favorite French skater right now, I have to say. That... Fair enough, fair enough. Only the French could get away with such things. But I appreciate it. But she did not appreciate her Rosado combination in the short. She had one of the most horrific falls we have seen in some yeah, time. She was, yeah, she, she may not be a factor this year. <laughs> Let's talk about Gracie. What is your read and what to expect from her? Because it's interesting that at... You know where I said that Megan give you, gives you the honest answer? So mm -hmm. before Skate America, Gracie kind of gave an honest answer and then backtracked. Whereas she said that she had been depressed and unmotivated after Worlds. And then she's like, well, I wanted to have a more normal life this summer. And it seemed like they, like she got real and like Lynn Plage was like, Just stop, it, yeah. stop, <laughs> you know, and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Gracie. Um, and, uh, it, and it looked like they just like were like, stop. So. Well, but everyone everyone is running with uh, she was going to win the world, but then she lost it. And I was like, but let's not have revisionist history about our friend Gracie, who we love. But I was like, but this is always the story. I think this was the bigger story in a sense that that was the one she really wanted. And that, but I think that yeah. obviously everything before that plays into what happened at Worlds. She, she's always had these ups and downs. And but it looks like she has this yeah. view of herself now that that is who she is, is the person. Yeah, who's... it's solidified. Yeah, okay. And I don't think that that's necessarily, look, I think that if Gracie Gold decides on New Year's Eve, screw it, I'm going to win nationals. I think she will. Uh, oh, if she ever skated it clean, the judges want to give it to her. I th I mean, it's this not my favorite. This is about the mental state at this point. She is in shape. She can't tell us that she, like, she is ready to go. But now my fear is she's developing weird problems. Like, where did the wrap come from? The wrap? The wax hole? I mean, what, the, like, are well, these, our are friend these Michelle Kwan once said that, you know, programs are like records. And, you know, when you have a bad... You know, when you, it's a broken record. And when you have a bad program, the bad performances, they start to repeat themselves. And yeah. that seems to be what's going on here. That's you know, the muscle memory for this program. She needs to sit in that wonderful art museum that ABC Sports and Chef Goldberg put Michelle in to make her look so much older and deeper than Tara. <laughs> she just, like, sits down and talks about the boxer who gets knocked down. and <laughs> Talk about branding. I mean, yeah, my exactly. NBA class... Yeah. You know, that. <laughs> Michelle, 
with her hair and, you know, in that art. Where was that art museum? What? Is that in L.A.? I've always wondered. But it's some donor's house. Yeah. Okay. If it's in L.A., I think Gracie needs to visit there with her hair down. Carly can exactly. take some photos of her. And exactly. we can just, you know, have the words come across the screen like perspective. Um, <laughs> and then she could say something really deep and we could be like, yes, Michelle, I love everything you do. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> But Michelle backed it up. I, you know, it's Michelle's off never was this off, you know. Well, thank you, Phil Hirsch. I'm trying to yeah. be very generous here. <laughs> <laughs> Credentials for nationals yeah. are coming out soon. Um, anyway. That's right. That's right. Uh, I, I mean, she's great. It's clear, like, all she has to do is put it together. They want her to do it. I, I think the skating world wants her to be the picture. But if you give Gracie about two weeks of solid training, she will two weeks of solid training where she's mentally and physically in it where in she it. is determined and decides that she is going to skate well and that she has the hunger to win you know right. i asked her at skate america if she had set new goals because i asked her this question because i feared that she had not and right. she said well i have goals for my career but i'm going to keep those quiet at this time and maybe that's because she was too outspoken about wanting to win worlds but i got the vibe that she had not really set things right and that she was just kind of here like well, i'm right. going to compete at skate america because that's what i do and that there was no real burning desire hunger right and right. I've kind of Which felt... is not to be the same as like a bad work ethic. No. Right. Because that kind of came up too. We like some people were saying like, oh, she's just lazy. I don't think it's lazy. She's at the rink every day. You could look. Yeah. Look, she trains that program. She just land yeah. everything in it. You know, Frank's not going to let her stop it. So, right. but I think that what's going on with her now is she has to either do it or, but it's it's coming to that moment where the yeah, come to go? Jesus moment has Why'd to. Why'd she happen. go here? I don't. She wanted to go. It was her decision. She couldn't have. It was her decision. Not some other person that was like, maybe this will help her. This well, was I literally think that her. She choice. is trying to figure this out herself as much as anyone. I don't think that yeah. she's, you know, and I, I think, you know, they've made some changes to the program. It's a nice program. I don't yeah. think it's necessarily her, but it's a lovely program. It's yeah, it's a, the costume's beautiful. The music is stunning. I, I just think it's for. Someone I wouldn't else. wear a Caroline. gold dress if I were having consistency problems, but you know that's you know neither here nor there at this point. That is such a such <laughs> not even the least income. of the worries. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, with her, I'm just curious what's going to happen. Are we like what, what is going on? But yeah, I I think that if she really decides to go for this national title, it'll be interesting. If yeah. she skates like this at nationals, I would not send her to the world championships. And I would say, you need to figure out if you want to do this or not want to do this or how much well, you want to do Well, they're the in a bind because if they, I find it hard to believe that we will retain three spots for so the ladies for the Olympics. Gracie I getting it together no. is perhaps our only hope. Unless Mariah Bell and Ashley can get us like sixth and seventh or fifth and eighth. But Mariah Bell has been very up and down throughout her career. She yeah. could do it, but she doesn't have that I think experience. even at her messiest, Gracie may still be a safer option to place higher than someone like Mariah or Mari or whomever we're pretending can do it this week. You know so what I mean? Gracie like, Gold is kind of our Hail Mary pass for the world championships. Yeah. But I wouldn't send her to four, co four continents. Like I would just look. And she always goes, and it's never an exciting time. Right. Yeah. So if I were on the committee, I would not send her to Four Continents. And if Ashley right. doesn't want to go, I would not send her. I would send Mariah Bell, Mariah Nagasu, and token third, maybe Amber Glenn, after this performance right. here. Yeah. And I would send Gracie to a spa and say, yeah. in the mountains, by yourself, like, look, just relax and enjoy yourself. Just and, take a long nap. Yeah. Just chill out. Just yeah. chill out. Perspective. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Perspective. Yes. She could like do a yoga thing where you could talk about gratitude. I mean, that is where I would say, you know, maybe one of those really prissy yoga retreats in the Bahamas or something that they go oh, on. Oh, nice. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then when she goes to like the restaurant, if they're playing like fun, upbeat music, she can use it for a program. Yes. Instead of like 
some heavy gravitas piece that doesn't speak to her. Yeah, I was speaking to someone who's familiar with her training, and they said how you know the short is going to be a good program or not is that the initial moves that Lori did, it's supposed to be very like sharp and striking, and they said that she just kind of did it. It almost with- looked like a joke. Like she was like, you know, a fat guy in a movie trying to do a superhero move or something. Yeah. That wasn't meant to be a weight joke. I, I just meant like someone awkward being like, yes. Ta-da! you know, like it didn't, it looked awkward, not yes. decisive. Yeah. Yeah. So I just, yeah, don't know what with that with her, what happened there. But I'm, I'm curious to watch the story of what's going to happen because, yeah. you know, Pauline is not supposed to be competing at nationals and, yeah. you know, there, she has that foot injury that's you know hard to heal so right it's interesting because she it takes at least a year to heal so I well think... props to her for taking it whether or not she comes back is a whole nother story i would think but yeah it'll be i think that if we have three spots that could be the determining factor because if we had two spots i don't know that i would be so well, eager she knows i think she, i think her message was so loud and clear at nationals last year you know what i mean yeah. but be... i understand her frustration yes so as we wrap things up, what was your moment of the week? Oh, my gosh. Um, well, how about Coliata's quadruple lutz? I think that that's a fair. That was a game changer. That I was like, well, damn, that's pretty fine looking. <laughs> that looked pretty darn good. So that might be it. I have to tie Nathan Chen's long program and the end of Yuri on Ice where we found out why Victor wanted to coach Yuri. That, to me, was such a moment and such a change. Game changer. Game changer. So, as always, I want to remind you to hold an edge. Keep your iPhone camera away from you when you are consuming beverages. And look sexy. Bye, guys. (laughs) Bye.